I'm Femi O.K. And I'm Malika Bilal. Today, a show you, our community, pitched. The severe lack of functional public libraries in Nigeria. Thank you for the pitch. We are discussing how the country is addressing the problem and the important role library culture plays in society. Hi, my name is Stella Damasas. I'm a Nigerian, an actor, a producer, a singer, a talk show host, a teacher. I love life and I love God. Hey, I'm in the stream. See you there. Roughly 40% of adults in Nigeria and 27% of youth are illiterate. That's according to a 2015 UNESCO study. And experts fear those numbers will only rise if the country doesn't address its deteriorating public library system. Libraries are said to be an equal opportunity leveler and play an important role in the promotion of reading habits. But advocates say the current condition of Nigeria's library system does not encourage reading. They say lack of leadership, underfunding and poor maintenance have produced libraries full of outdated material and left the buildings themselves in shambles. So what needs to happen to encourage more Nigerians to read? Here to talk about this in Anambra State, Nigeria, in Kem Asrigwe. She is a librarian and director of the Nigerian Book Foundation. In Lagos, Fumi Ilori, she's the founder of iRead Network Africa. And in Abuja, Emmanuel Alabi, he's a secondary school teacher. Welcome, everybody. Great to have you here. In Kem, I'm looking at the website for your library. It is impressive. Kenneth Dyke State Central E-Library. We've got world-class facilities deployed to give visitors an unequaled experience. We have computers yeah. here. Yeah. If I just scroll down a little bit, e-learning for kids, register to read or borrow books, academic research, e-learning for all, mm -hmm. goes on and on and on and on. Is this representative of libraries in Nigeria? This is very, very, very impressive. No, most libraries are not that way. You know, we just got lucky with um, the government that was before this one. They had an interest in libraries and they invested heavily in libraries. Most of the libraries in, in Nigeria, some, some, some are good, some, you know, they have the computers, internet, Aha, and some might have trouble with connectivity. We appreciate that. It's a Nigeria show. It happens. Oh, but I, I love that she started saying no with a, mm -hmm. a clear indication that they are not all like this. And that's because we saw pictures circulating online of ones that are very far from that library. So uh, this is uh, a library in Delta State, the Azoro Library. And here are some pictures that people are sharing. This is just uh, one set of what it looks like inside. You can see the Really, the, the books, the shelves are pretty empty, look pretty old. You can see the state of this library as I click through here. For me, when you see this picture versus the, the tab that Femi showed at the very beginning of the show, which one is more accurate in terms of your own experience for how you experience libraries? Well, libraries are meant to be accessible and well equipped. Libraries should be a place that you're looking forward to go to. It's a big shame that a library would turn that way in any part of the country. And um, I think libraries should be in every community, starting from the kindergarten, even up to the university and even the older professionals. Emmanuel, what happened to the libraries in Nigeria? There, there was a time when there were libraries in every state, lots of schools had libraries, universities had well-stocked, up-to-date libraries. What happened? Um, I think um, library value or library's value shifted. People got caught up in some other things. Um, I think with the dispensation of phones where children like to they're always on their phone pressing things and looking at things or cartoons on TVs and the values in the minds of parents. Gradually, everything drifted apart. Then sometimes we can also consider the, the security of the nation. We cannot just let a child go into a public place without fully knowing the security of that place. Mm. We don't want your child kidnapped or missing or, or any story after that. So it's needed that security be put in place 
even in those libraries to be able to make to help the parents release their children to go into such places so i think that's that's one first the value two security ah. i think that's my thought on that and can you make can I say something here can yeah, I say please. Something? yeah can please. I say something here yeah beyond that what really happened was that funding got caught you know the amount of them um, funds that we are being allocated to libraries we are caught and because of that new books were not coming in you know, chairs got old, um, tables, uh, um, legs went off, shelves were, shelves were and are still falling down. So how would you feel comfortable in that kind of environment to read? Just like Fumi said, you find out that libraries are meant to be accessible, places that you can go and relax, read, interact, communicate, collaborate, you know, generate information, just study, learn. But when when they don't look welcoming, you find out that you won't actually like your children to go there. Beyond the issue of security, actually, I've not heard of any, any child being molested or getting into any difficulty in a library in Nigeria. I've not heard of that. In a public library, no, I've not heard. Yeah. But you still, you want a space that children can relax, where you feel that this place is good for my children. And when the libraries don't look welcoming, the chairs are old, the shelves are, are somehow, um, books are old, what, what do you expect? Nobody will want to take his or her child there. So I, I, I think that's the issue. Funding, funding got cut down drastically, and that changed things. And value too, like Emmanuel said, it, it was as if people stopped valuing libraries and what they can do in the lives of their uh, children, adults, uh, uh, um, retirees, artisans, just about everybody. Mm. So, and Kim, I hear what you're saying about uh, libraries that are welcoming. So I wanted to share a contrast with our audience between a library that perhaps is more welcoming and one that is not. This is Pelo, who just tweeted in a few minutes ago, always happy to see this state-owned yeah. library in Lagos getting a face look lift. And you can see the pictures of it there. Uh, it looks great, at least from the outside. But on the yeah. other hand, yeah. this is the yeah. experience of one of our community members from the north. This is Atik. He says, I don't have a picture, but it's very interesting empty and all of the furniture is older than me. Most of the books are twice my age. He doesn't say how old he is. Oh, oh, 10 oh, visitors oh, per oh. day. And he says, I'm not sure, but they say people take the books and they don't return them or return them damaged, which means the books aren't secured. And he's talking about the Kano State Library, he goes on to say. Is there a difference between libraries in the north of the country and libraries in the south, Emmanuel? Okay. The libraries... Emmanuel about the same. I think what um, Lagos has done is really commendable. But nevertheless, if you look at all these uh, other libraries, I've been to like three, one in Quara State, one in Oshun State, and um, the one here. The one here is also better because Abuja is like the federal capital. But yeah. uh, still, it's not there yet. Looking at the fact that, like the person said, in he, um, he's our tweet, that some of the books are twice his or her age. So it's necessary for us to have new books. I was talking about security the other time. Even as an adult, a place you're not comfortable to sit down in or a place that creeps you out, how would you take your child there? So she's correct. She is correct for saying um, it, it needs to be a nice place, it needs to be a cozy place. A library needs to be somewhere welcoming. Even the colors around the world, the kind of shelves you have there, should be invited. Mm. Attraction is the key for every child. Every child needs an attraction. I think over the time, maybe lack of funding and all that, libraries stop being attractive to mm. the young man. There's a headline that caught our eye, which is this one here, which says representatives move to revive public library services in Nigeria. It's not just a push mm. amongst representatives but from civil society as well. For me, you saw that there weren't enough public libraries, and you did what? I started up um, a mobile library, a library that goes to children in their schools and communities, and the children can borrow the books. The mobile library visits them again, 
and they can return the book to pick up another one. Now, the advantage of the mobile library is not just that the children can select a book. We have a lot of volunteers and experts in the education um, department that can inspire the children to want to read. And even though we tell the children that they can only have one book per week, the children are pleading to say, can we have two, well, can we well, have three book a books? week? <laughs> wow, why, yes. why, why do you have to ration them? Well, we, we, because they also have cool books to read, so we don't want to just bombard them. One other thing, uh -huh. we, thing we do is we make them write what they've read. Uh -huh. So they do a review of what they've read. They bring out new words. They tell us why they liked the book and why they did not like the book. The children are not as interested in reviewing the book as much as they want to read the book. But part of the goal mm -hmm. is not for them to only be readers, but also to be writers, and we've been able to achieve a lot doing that. I'm looking at the interior here, and this looks so inviting. The colors are there, the books look amazing, and it's not just looking great. I, I want to hear more about that interaction with the kids when you give them something active to do around reading, around books. Can you tell us a story that yes. kind of takes us there? Yes. So whenever we meet with the children, we have story time with them. It's also an opportunity for us to treat all the things that are not treated in school. For example, we talk to them about climate change issues. We talk to them about how they can clean up the environment. Today is World Malaria Day, and we had a storytelling with the children using the malaria comic book donated by one of our partners, Iba Foundation. And the children were able to get more from the knowledge of malaria using books. So whenever we do that, they have more interest in reading. What we find out is that sometimes the books are still, when you go to the public libraries, most of the books are still. So there's no funding for them to uh. change the books. So how old and would they be for me, for is, me, for instance? How old would the books be when you yes. say stale? What, what, what decade are we talking about? Maybe 1976. Ooh. You could even get like 86. No. You could get like 96. No. You don't get a lot of recent books. All right, and, and Kim, I, I hear you. You, you're not, you don't sound that happy. <laughs> no, 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 no. See, we have books, you know, 2000, uh, um, um, 2000 some even um, 2006, 2007 books in some libraries. You know, but you go to some again, like she said, I know where I can get a book that was um, published in 1957 and is still on the shelf of um, a library. But again, you know, looking at the wider picture, you have to also check how is the publishing industry in Nigeria? How is the book industry going? Do we have enough publishers? What do they publish? You know, all these are factors that you must look into. It's, it's, it's not just a matter of it. There are no books on the shelves. Sure, we used to get donations from um, Book Aid International <coughs> and um, for Africa. But you find out that they'll give you books, but those books, they don't really talk about you. There's a global body of knowledge, okay, but still, you find out that you still have to domesticate some co concepts, some ideas, so that children will, will understand them. And when, if a book industry is not vibrant, you can't expect the libraries to, um, to be full of uh, uh, new books, wonderful books, you know, books that children need. And again, because you find out that schools have curriculum, and when libraries cannot afford to buy those books that are in the curriculum. For goodness sake, most parents who want to drop their kids off at the libraries. Do I make sense? I don't know. 
It definitely makes sense, yeah, and, I, and I'm glad. I'm glad you mentioned that uh, the the part about a culture of authors in Nigeria. We actually put out a call to our community because we know we have a lot of readers out there uh, asking if there was a local author that they think the world should know. We have a long list of people who tweeted back with hashtag stream book club. And you can see this here. We'll tweet this out so others can add their own names to it. Hajia Balaraba Ramat Mohammed. She writes in Hausa, which is the lingua franca in the northern part of Nigeria. That's just one of the names that we got. Uh, but. Focusing a little more, shifting the conversation on where the onus for sparking this interest in reading comes from, we got a video comment from someone who had some thoughts on that. Have a listen to Shola. Well, education is a mirage without um, a quality school library, and um, accessibility of information is very essential to knowledge accumulation. And libraries have a major role to play by creating interfaces with the global knowledge system and geared um, towards um, societal growth. Well, according to um, a survey conducted by UNESCO, approximately 65 million Nigerians are illiterate, and it's time for our government and individuals to take action to redress our literacy crisis simply by providing um, schools with necessary libraries, resources, and even training for teachers. Bumi, I know that you were a teacher for nine years. What do you make of her comment? I think it was just beautiful, and it's the way to go. If there are training for teachers, if the libraries are well-equipped, the training for the teachers will help them to be able to inspire the children to read. So sometimes you find schools that have well-equipped libraries but the libraries are no-go area. So they say, no, we don't want the books torn, so you cannot have access to it. And for me, there is no essence of equipping a library when children cannot have access to it. When the teachers are trained, then they can inspire the children to read. I'm just looking at different options that Nigeria might have. If there's this deficit in funding and the libraries, some libraries have been neglected, maybe digitization might be the way forward. Here on the Cable Life site says Nigeria to digitize books, materials in National Library. And Al Jazeera reported just a little while ago on another way of keeping books up to date. Have a look at this project. The internet connection at the university is down, but Abu Bakr Mohammed is not bothered. He's a law student and comes here to do research using something called the e-granary. It's a digital library that doesn't require an internet connection. eGranary stores documents and books on a subscriber's own computer so that everyone within the institution can have access even when there is no internet. And Kem, I'm wondering if this might be the way forward for Nigeria if the libraries have already been neglected, maybe going online using digital libraries is the way to get libraries up to date, make them more exciting. What are your thoughts? First of all, let me um, say something about what Kumi said. See, school libraries are great. They are very needful. Children need to have libraries, functional libraries in their schools. But again, beyond that, public libraries. You know why? Because at the end of the school, uh, you know, school closes, children mm. go home, primary. The library closes too. And you find out too that weekends, they can't go to the school libraries. So you find out that they still need to use the, the public libraries. Now, what you said about um, um, eGranary and uh, other stuff like that, USPF, that is an arm of the Nigerian Communications Commission, gave the uh, libraries all over the country, computers, um, servers, and um, stuff like that too. All of them offline. But you find out that most of the times, uh, 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 maybe their database is down and so on. But if this one can be done, saved, you know, specifically to the systems in the library, it might work for the libraries that have computers. Uh -huh. Like now we have them um, 316 public libraries in Nigeria. And I can assure you that below 40 have computers. Mm. If you now say that is the solution to the problem, what happens to the others that don't have the computers? What do they do? What do they do, you know, that, that's I mean that all of them need to have computers. All of them need to have better spaces where children can come and learn. Adults too, this is the 21st century. Everybody needs to keep on learning, you know, whether you're a worker or an artisan or whatever. 
libraries need to be that place where they can go and do all that. And I believe that with better funding, then again with computers, internet, and so on, in all the public libraries, and again, more public libraries, we are 180 million estimated population. And, and 316 libraries. 316 public libraries, for mm. goodness sake. I mean, it doesn't work. Yeah, no. It doesn't work at that's, all. That's not even it one per work. book for a week, is it? It's like, a, have a little rip of a page it, it and you can share it with me. Malika. So I, want, I wanted to share. I wanted to share something that's circulating online because we're talking about digitizing. Uh, there are some libraries that are trying to modernize, but they may not yet be at that stage. This is the Kano State Library Board. Their Facebook page. Uh, we saw a little bit earlier uh, what one of our community members thought of this library system. Newly printing machines purchased by the pr recent administration. These are printing and binding units. You can see the pictures here. They're quite proud of this. So this is an attempt to modernize, but it may not be enough for all of our community members. This is what one person says. There's so many books that have not yet seen daylight. They're just dormant and physical libraries. If digitized, these materials will be available. Here's an answer, though, that another person tweeted in. This is Allende, who says, Digi, when there's no electricity, for example, to keep access to devices going. Yeah. Emmanuel, I'm wondering what yeah. you think of that. As it is, we're trying to Skype with you in Nigeria and having difficulties uh, with that connection. Do you think that digital devices, is that the way to go? Yes, digital devices are good. But first, there has to be either a stable power supply or an alternate one for the library. Like the person that Twitter said, you, you need to consider the electric power supply first before going digital else keep digital aside there's no doubt digital is way better and it's the way to go while we need to read books uh, from my work with children i've been with children for more than a decade this set of children this generation they are more visual they are the type that mm -hmm. they grew up looking at phones and tv so they want to see what they are learning mm. they want to see what they are reading about that's why youtube has gone viral and they are so, so Emmanuel, and, Emmanuel and guests, let me share this thought. Let me share this controversial thought with you. Emmanuel, your, your Skype is cracking up a little bit, so that's why I'm jumping in just to smooth over the audio edges here. So we asked our online community about better libraries in Nigeria, increasing the number of libraries in Ni Nigeria. Mohammed says, we lack a reading culture. But then I'm thinking, how many amazing Nigerian authors has Nigeria given the world? Just have a look at some of them here. The list goes on and on and on and on. Why is there a disconnect between the literary canon that Nigeria has given the world and how many illiterate Nigerians there are in the world? That doesn't make sense for me. Does it make sense to you? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. And if you also check it up, I think we need to begin to raise young authors. We need to begin to raise young authors because right now the type of books they want to read, I gave a child a book just recently and she didn't want to read it. It's a Nigerian authored book, but I don't know what the mix was, but it looked very complicated. When you find out from the foreign books, you'll find a lot of pictures, very interesting, mm -hmm. comes with ad covers, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and... The storyline is just so beautiful. Mm. We have a lot of beautiful um, books here sure. in Nigeria, but not many of them are targeted to the young children. I hear you. And so if they don't have books to read, then they can't also be able to write. So I think we need to dedicate a lot of, um, a lot of focus on this new generation of children for me. so that they can read and also be able to write. For me and Emmanuel and Kem, I really appreciate you having a, a little book club, a little Nigerian book club with us today. Malika, where should we end? I'll give the last word to Aliyu, who pitched the show on what will happen if we don't address this. Apart from the problem of the absence of political will, the, another big challenge that causes low le literacy levels in Nigeria is a horrible teacher training. Teacher training is very, very abysmal across the board. And unless things are done to develop, train teachers in ways that are actually sufficient to make them capable of educating the present generation of Nigerians, uh, definitely we are digging an early grave for the nation.
And that wraps up today's edition of The Stream. Remember, if you've got an idea, a pitch, you can do exactly what that last commenter did and actually tweet us, hashtag AJStream. Your show idea could end up right here on The Stream. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care.